SpaceX's Starship 24 is surrounded in scaffolding. NASA has released some incredible imagery of Orion. Two rockets are close to launching from new places and a lot more is coming up in Monday's Tomorrow Space News. First of all, let's head down to Starbase and see what SpaceX has been up to over the past week with their Starship development. Ship 24 has had a strip of tiles removed from its aft end, which is interesting to see. I'm not sure what this was done for unless all of these tiles side by side managed to all get damaged for some reason. Younger sibling Ship 25 has been shifted in High Bay 1, which could be for the installation of all three Raptor vacuum engines. There's a new test tank on the structural test stand, which is affectionately known as the Can Crusher. The stainless steel construction of the tank was being tested out just by the rocket garden. The orbital launch mount has seen some scorching following last week's 14 engine static fire by Super Heavy Booster 7. It looks as if the damage is just aesthetic, but nothing has been confirmed. Moving over to suborbital pad B, which is now just used as a Starship test stand, it has been receiving repairs between test campaigns. You can see that some scaffolding has been erected around the fins of Ship 24. The new tent next to the propellant site is nearly finished being covered over. When completed, this will provide a covered area for teams to work underneath on whatever they get up to at the launch site. SpaceX's next resupply mission, CRS-26, has been delayed by one day to Tuesday following a leak in the thermal control system of the final ever Cargo Dragon to be constructed. This issue was found to be caused by a single flange which has been replaced, warranting the one day delay. It has also been announced that SpaceX has decided to build a fifth and final Crew Dragon after they announced a few months ago that they would halt production after Crew Dragon Freedom was completed. This new Dragon is expected to be ready in 2024. NASA's Orion capsule was announced as go for the powered flyby of the moon by Jim Free on Sunday with the European service module beginning its powered flyby burn at 12.44 UTC on the day of this episode's release, Monday. After successfully slowing itself down, NASA lost communications with the vehicle as it passed behind the moon at an altitude just over 100 kilometers. Orion is now on the correct trajectory to place itself into the planned distance retrograde orbit around the moon this coming Friday where it will stay for just under a week before leaving this orbit on the 1st of December. If you want a full rundown of the mission including the CubeSats which hitched a ride and where a ride will splash down on Earth make sure to check out my Artemis 1 special which was published just after the launch on Wednesday. That's linked in the corner. These stunning images were captured by the cameras on the ends of the service module solar panels and it finally gives us the ability to see a modern crew rated spacecraft heading to a destination no human has visited since 1972. This capability to have these high definition selfies taken and sent back to Earth is just incredible. ABL Space Systems, the latest smallsat launch provider aiming for orbit, are having a little bit of a tricky time attempting to get their first flight off the ground. There's no live stream of this launch, but ABL are providing live updates on their rarely used Twitter account. The first launch attempt reached T-30 minutes before strange data was observed during the fueling process on the first stage of their RS-1 rocket, and the launch attempt was scrubbed. This was caused by a leaky valve, wonder where I've heard that one before, in the pressurization system. This was replaced with a new valve. The next attempt came on the 17th of November, which it once again sadly failed to launch, but it got a lot closer. This time it was the rocket which aborted the flight during the ignition process at T-1.8 seconds because of turbo pump oxygen inlet conditions. The company's next launch attempt at the time of writing is 2200 UTC on the date of this episode's release, Monday the 21st. For the latest updates on the launch attempt, make sure to head over to ABL's Twitter account, which is at ABL Space Systems. A small sat launch provider that's been around for a few years are also gearing up for a first launch, however it's not the first launch of the rocket. Rocket Lab are vertical in Virginia for their maiden flight out of the USA. Currently scheduled for December 7th, this launch will add Electron to the list of rockets that have launched from multiple countries such as Soyuz and Pegasus. There's another rocket that's close to collecting that achievement too, as Spaceport Cornwall has finally received a Spaceport Operator license from the Civil Aviation Authority, who are the space regulator here in the UK. This means that Virgin Orbits can, and have already, been getting on with rehearsals for launch day, but the launch cannot occur until Virgin Orbit has a launcher license from the CAA. The launch is also extremely unlikely to happen until December at this point, so anyone attending, make sure you've got your winter gear ready. A winter midnight on the Cornish coast? It'll be chilly. 
The space traffic segment this week is entirely composed of Chinese flights, the first of which was the Yaogan 3403 satellite and an unknown test payload. These were launched at 0138 Universal on the 15th of November from Site 9401 at the Zhiguan Satellite Launch Center. Both payloads ended up in a 1092 by 941 km 63.4 degree low Earth orbit. Next up were five Zhilin 103D satellites, which were launched on a Ceres 1 rocket by the private Chinese company Galactic Energy. These satellites were launched from Site 95 at the Zhiquan Satellite Launch Center and they've ended up in a sun synchronous orbit. Four stage engine start. Three, two, one. Boosters in ignition. And liftoff of Artemis 1. We rise together back to the moon and beyond. Of course, we did have the launch of Artemis 1, but that got its own dedicated video, as I mentioned earlier. That's still linked in the corner of your screen if you want to check it out. Coming up over the next seven days, we have the aforementioned RS-1 maiden flight from ABL, UTELSAT-10B on a Falcon 9 from the Cape, SpaceX's CRS-26 resupply mission to the International Space Station, another batch of Yaogan 36 Group 03 satellites on a Long March 2D from Xichang, Pleiades and Neo 5 and 6 on a standard Vega rocket from Kuru, EOS-6 on an Indian PSLV from the Satish Devan Space Center, GLONASS-M No. 61 on a Soyuz 2.1B from the Plisets Cosmodrome in Northern Russia, and finally, Haku 2 RM1 and a lunar flashlight on another Falcon 9 from the Cape. Before we see what's coming up over the next week on the channel, thank you to all the citizens of tomorrow who financially support the show. If you want to access space news scripts as they're being written, our member life hangouts, Discord channels, and a bunch more cool perks, then head to join.tmro.tv or the join button below. Let's have a look at what else you've got to watch this week on tomorrow. On Wednesday, Tamitha will be back with another important space weather update. Sadly, we won't have a live show on Friday and I'll be back next Monday with some form of space news. Thanks for watching. Hopefully we'll see you on Wednesday and goodbye.